and is willing and is willing to do what is necessary to stir the hearts of others. So Lord, do so and more in this house, in your people, and in this last day. Thank you, Lord. Can we please give the Lord a praise clap in this house? for anyone who wears a suit jacket. It can happen to you too. <laughs> uh, it's okay to smile and it's okay to rejoice. Amen. There's one. Can we do something? Can we give the Lord a praise clap like a joyous one? Like God, you're good. addictive and makes you look like I want that too and in this last day especially in this last day it is the joy of the Lord that's your strength it is the peace of the Lord that guards your heart and even your mind until the day of Jesus if you think anything less is fanatical then someone's taught you wrong amen Put our hands out this morning, please. Let's say this together. This is safe. Let's say this together. Say, Jesus, you're the Prince of Peace. And I thank you this morning for your peace. You said it surpasses all understanding. And you said, it guards my heart and even my mind right up until you return. So I thank you that your peace, the Bible says, is the umpire of my life. I receive your peace in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Morgan, I'm so inspired by that. You know, with that woohoo! You know what? It, the only time I ever hear, hear that now is when someone wins on that Lotto 649. It's like, I don't think that's right. I think that's actually supposed to be our call. So I just want you to play along with me. And on the count of three, we're going to do a woohoo. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three. Woohoo! I think the devil hates that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so inspired, Morgan. I just felt like there was that sound. Like, we just need to let loose sometimes. And, and you know, for anyone who knows Morgan, he's not the hopping around, jumping type that's going to come up here and do all that. So that's totally anointing. And, Morgan, I just so respect you and appreciate you for just making yourself vulnerable. So I'll woohoo with you anytime. Hallelujah. I've often said what a mixed bag of marbles the church is, right? <laughs> point to your neighbor and say, that's you. Now point to the other side and say, that's you too. There's no professionals in here. We're not professional Christians. Hallelujah. We just love Jesus. And, you know, I, I, Darren has said before, um, I was even thinking about Morgan jumping up here. It's possible Morgan just loves Jesus more than you do. Is that a challenge? Yes, it is. You don't have to show that you love Jesus by hopping around. But sometimes, you know, Paul had to shake the snake off, didn't he? The, the snake jumped out of the wood pile and he just shook it off. He didn't walk around carrying the snake. He shook it off. And everyone, you know what they did? They waited to see if he was going to die. It's like, oh, that's bad. He must have sinned. He must be terrible. But he shook it off and nothing happened. He went too far. They thought he was a god and began to worship. Not the way to go, but shake it off. Amen. So we have a Christmas Eve service. 
that's this week. Wow, I know. That's Friday. Friday night at 7. We're going to have cider and cookies. Um, for We'll open the doors at 6. And you can come and have cookies and cider if you like. I always forget to release our kids. Sylvia is going. We just bless our kids today. We just bless you to have a great class. They're doing cookie decorating today. Amen. Where do we start? Somewhere. I don't, I don't think the beginning is the start. I think it's just somewhere wherever the anointing takes us. So we want to welcome our online community. If you are in this house and you have a cell phone, which I know you do, and a Facebook app, I would love for you to share the gospel. It looks like that share button under your uh, the New Life Victory live feed online. We just want to welcome you guys. And if you, I believe you probably got the woohoo part. We just released the woohoo anointing over you as well. Okay, Christmas Eve service. Then we're going to have a Boxing Day service. We're just going to do a one-hour service. It'll still start at 10. Uh, but we'll do our best because it's a fairly busy weekend. Uh, but it's still important for us to gather. We also are... I hear myself. Surely. I know. I do the same thing every time. You have to put your phone on silent. A New Year's Eve service. My husband is going to speak about that. Not necessarily service, but maybe prayer time. Yeah? Okay. And January fast starts. <laughs> that always sounds so mean after we're going into Christmas and we all plump up because it's like so good cookies and but in uh, as victory churches around the world we actually do a january fast and uh we what we do is we follow by a daniel fast and we'll do meat sweets and media or you know if, if you're not a meat person something else if you're not a media person it might be maybe you need to fast covid numbers Maybe you need to fast, you know, governmental upset around the world. Maybe you need to fast the news or, yeah. It, we'll, we'll talk a little bit. My husband will talk a little bit more about that. But that's starting on January 3rd. Amen. So I wanted to thank you for your offering. And I realized that because, so since COVID, we've had to adjust the way that we do things. I mean, we, we don't hand the basket around anymore. What we actually do is we keep it back at the debit counter. And I want to thank you for your e-transfers. It's so amazing. It actually saves us bank fees. It's all kinds of easy and fun. And we're so blessed to be able, through this time, um, God sustains. You know, he really does. And he's a generous God. And we can never, I remember our pastor used to say, you can never outgive God. It's like, what a challenge that would be. God just keeps giving and giving and giving. And I want to encourage you um, to continue in your giving, even, even especially through January when the visa bills and MasterCard bills come in and Christmas adds up. <laughs> but for year-end taxes, uh, this Sunday is... No, it's not. Yeah, the 31st. I'm like ahead of myself. Yeah, almost. Anyways, get your year-end um, taxes or your year-end giving in so that we can do a tax receipt in January. That's what I mean to say. Um, In-house, it will be next Sunday is the last one, but online, I mean, e-transfer, it's like amazing because it's just perfectly easy. Amen? So I'm rambling. So how about you pray and all of us are done. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Can we give all of our online people just a, a hand today? You guys are awesome, all you online people. There's something about, like, the hour that we're in, and the more things go what we would consider crazy, it's like, the more I want to give. Seriously. We bought a goat. That's right, we did. We bought a goat, and uh, we donated a goat. Was that World Vision? Samaritan's Purse. I, ju I just find that the crazier the days are getting, the more I just want to give. And I don't think it's just me, like Shirley and others, Melody, at the gift store when we bring people through. They get so blown away by the presence of the Lord, they'll be overwhelmed and then we didn't ask them for money. They would start to give and give big. 
God's so good, amen? I pray this for all of us, Lord, and I'm praying for the offering. And you can have, you have up on the screen, girls, different ways to give. Or you don't have it on the screen, different ways to give. There it is. Awesome. In person, e-transfer, by mail, check only, that kind of thing. Um, Father, I, I pray this. That in this last day, your people would be, Lord, just like we, we worship today, without fear. Without fear, your spirit moves. There's something so beautiful and supernatural. Men and women get free without fear. Father, I pray that that would just carry through in our whole lives, in our giving to you. Lord, without fear, but trusting in you and your word with all of our heart. In Jesus' name, Lord, would you bless this church? Would you bless everyone that has given so far? And for those, Lord, that haven't, but Lord, they just want to trust you. They want to test you. God, they're allowed to do that in the way of giving. So allow them to do it. Allow each one of us, even for those who are terrified to give, allow them to try you, God, and see that you're faithful. In Jesus' name, I ask you bless people abundantly that revelation and understanding and wisdom would come. Lord, just the truth of the scripture that you're not the God who holds back or wants your people in poverty. You want them blessed so that they can be a blessing. In Jesus' name. Everyone who even wants to believe that, say amen. Amen. All right. Now, um, the Bible says this. I'm just going to do a little. I have to do this. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Can I get an amen? It doesn't say provoke the devil. It says resist him. Steadfast in the faith. Now, there's some crazy things that are happening in this world. And crazy bills that are being passed in very crazy ways. I mean, um, Quebec and New Brunswick both don't allow unvaccinated people in the church now. Can you believe that? Unvaccinated people are not allowed in a church any longer. That is an overstep. A big one. Resist the devil steadfast in the faith and he will flee. Sometimes resist the devil means this. Write into your MLA, write your MP and say these things are unacceptable. Amen? thing I'm just going to say about that because you do need to know and in the new year we're going to go on about this a little bit more and for those who think that the church should have nothing to do with the government it's actually completely wrong it is the church the praying church that influences the government and when you read the bible my goodness were they involved with the government a lot amen now here's what's happened there's a bill that got passed and it's called C4, and what it's, they say it's this, it's to ban conversion therapy, but what it does is this, even if somebody wants help and is struggling with their sexuality and comes to you or the church and asks you for help, even to pray, that's illegal. If a church now prays or speaks, if I speak here about Genesis, about God created the man and woman, that's called provoking or persuading someone to change their sexuality, and it's now become illegal. Crazy, crazy world. Now, a little bit more just on that. Just a couple quotes that were taken from the government. We're not the enemy. We just don't know. And a question and answer on the previous bill, C8, which has just preceded this one, the justice minister was asked if it would be illegal for religious leaders to speak about homosexuality. And he replied and said, only if it's open-ended and exploratory. I have to tell you, the word of God is not open-ended. It is a closed book. It is final in Jesus' name, amen. Now again, Resist the devil. Don't go out provoking. Amen? I think that's foolish. Anyone who stands up and just waves their flag and says, Thus, down saith, and all of this kind of stuff. Man, we're called to love. 
and at the same time, you're also called to resist. So here's what I'm saying. Call your MLA. Call your MP. This last bill that just got pushed through that made really a lot of the Bible illegal, there was no debate. There was no uh, royal opposition. Both parties totally agreed and rammed it through. And most incredible to this was this. Afterwards, it's quoted, there was not just shaking of hands, but dancing as this happened. So, are we going to condemn them? No, we're not. But I'll tell you what, we are in crazy times. And here's even more crazy. You were ordained and called to this time. Amen? Resist the devil steadfast in the faith, and he will flee. Amen? Amen! Now, here's what resist does. In New Brunswick, they were also going to make it illegal or unvaccinated to go to the grocery store and get food and farmer's market. 2,200 people called their MLA and complained, and they backed off immediately and changed the law. Amen. That's why I say this. Don't go out looking for a fight, waving your banner, but resist the devil steadfast in the faith, and he will flee. Amen. By the way, church, this is the church's position. Stand therefore, and having done all things, therefore stand. No one else will resist the devil. Only the church will. It's our job. Amen. So we'll do it. We'll do it with joy. We will do it in the spirit, and we will see great and mighty things. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise clap. He's so good. And a woohoo from Angie. <laughs> Actually, uh, give praise and worship a hand too. Really good job. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks, Chris. Praise you, Lord. And transition. Amen. God's so good. Uh, again, and I'm going to speak about this a little bit today. You are ordained to be in this time. You're, you're alive now. It wasn't a mistake. It's not some random. You're supposed to be here right now. So, Father, thank you. Lord, your ways are perfect, always perfect. Lord, what you've said in your word is perfect. It still applies. You're not outdated. Father, even though people or, or men or nations would rage against you, there still is no better place to be. Father, thank you for your good and perfect plan. And I'm asking today, Lord, would you open up our hearts and open up our understanding? Lord, there's, there's not one of us that knows everything, and that's why we come to you. In fact, you ask us, you say, if any of us lacks wisdom to ask of you, and you would give liberally because you're good. So, Father, I also thank you for removing any kind of them against us mentality and allowing us to see the truth of your gospel, your good news. Lord, bless your word today. Let it go and find soil. Let us make us glad, sad, or mad, either one, but bring about change in us. In Jesus' name, in a wild and crazy, crazy day that we live in. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And Father, by the way, thank you for this Christmas season. It is awesome, Lord. Amen. Um, don't miss, just looking at these trees, man, don't miss, don't miss the supernatural of God's Christmas. Don't miss it. And in fact, uh, can you put up that scripture, Rachel, please? Everyone say hi, Rachel. Hi. You were like online popular, though no one gets to see you. You're popular. Oh, yeah. See, they're going to have to, I like to move, so they're going to have to put like a border or like maybe a little chicken cage or, <laughs> or tape on the, yeah. I keep on walking out of their frame and they get upset with me. All right. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. Amen. And in him there is no darkness at all. And I was thinking this morning, um, I wonder if, like our, when we did the gift store, the perfect gift store, um, 
100 or 220 kids or something. Uh, that went wonderful. That always goes wonderful. Whenever you get to give, it's powerful. But we did tours and for two weeks, and we took people through, for different people in the town, business people who have never seen it before, and they were just taken by it, like blown away taken. Brought the RCMP in there as well. They sat in the chairs, and they said they just wanted to stay there for the rest of the week. They're good. I, man, I slept. I laid down underneath one of the trees just because the peace was so strong in there. But I, I wonder, when people's lives were changed so much, this morning I was just wondering, at, can you put scripture back up, Rach? Was it because that God is light? And when they walked into that place, man, it was a light extravaganza. I mean, you, you're, whoa, lights like this. But when you walked in, and I'm, I'm wondering just because of this, just because light shines into the darkness. And darkness hasn't, doesn't have to be all at once. It can be very subtle, like it's been over the last two, three years. And in fact, Rachel, can you put up the definition of darkness? Darkness is... Ignorance of, this is not my definition, this is biblical definition. Ignorance of divine things, and sometimes that's by choice. Ignorance of divine things, and it's associated wickedness, and the resultant misery in hell, ouch! But when you skinny it down, if you only had a moment to speak to someone to save their life, you'd want to say it as, as quick and as serious and black and white as you could. So that's what darkness is. I just wonder. That in this season, when all crazy is happening, and my goodness, the things are the way they are, that when you stepped into something like, like the gift store, and you were overwhelmed by light, which is, by the way, who God is. God is light, and there is no ignorance of divine things in him. There's no wickedness, and there certainly isn't misery in hell. In fact, there is this, peace, joy, goodness, all the, all the fruit of the Spirit, plus the promise of being in heaven with him afterwards. I just wonder if that was being spoken as you walked into the gift store and all the prayer that was gone in there. Because people like, here's how you know God's touched you. Love also equals charity. That's, that's the definition of love is charity. And charity always is give. So you had all of these people come in and we took them in tours. And, and some people said stuff. Some people didn't just shook their heads. And they would walk and they would do the tour. And you did the tour. And we had the scriptures down there uh, of Matthew and Luke of baby Jesus in the manger and why he came, and then it led them right into the manger. All it's doing is provoking what God's already put in people's heart. And he's bringing it to light again. And so all of these people, it didn't matter how old they were or how professional they were, you saw this childlikeness in them. They were all brought back to simplicity and truth. And then they go and they're like, wow, and then wow, and then over here, wow. Overwhelmed with all this light which God is, and they end up in the manger, wow. And then they ended up into the gift part where we're giving away all the toys. And they're like, wow. So they saw charity and the result of being in that presence and all that light was all of a sudden they, we didn't even ask them to give. We didn't ask anyone. And they gave and gave huge. God's light. And in him there's no darkness at all. You're not, you're not here by accident in this time. You're not. If you know Jesus, he calls you from this point on children of light, father of lights. Amen. What a time to be alive. Is there thing happening in the news? Yes, totally there is. And all it is is just verifying, whoa, we really are in this time. And here we are alive, not called to run into a cave and ask the mountains to hide you and fall on you. You're actually called to be light to be not afraid in this hour. Fight wind, but to go about and shine. Seriously, a little bit of love changes everything. I can't believe how bold I am now. And I don't mean arrogant, and I don't mean outspoken and doing stuff like that. Bold just means saying what has to be said, and usually it's in love. If you've ever been into the post office at any time, you can hear some grumbling. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I, I, I usually, like once a month or something like that, I bring them coffees or something just to sedate them and go, it's okay, you're still loved and still appreciated in there. But it can get nasty in there. Grumble, rah, 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 rah. All you have to do is just say one thing kind. And it doesn't have, you don't have to quote scripture. You just got to be kind. You can change the entire atmosphere. Just they're grumbling about everything about, oh, I don't even remember what it was, but I said, you know what? 
Christmas is almost here and it changes everything. And the whole place shut up for like five seconds and then people started to say nice things. You can do that. Just one person can do that. Amen? Amen. Or pray for Morgan and set him in there. Oh, man, you'll have a revival. <laughs> Amen. 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 Don't you ever, ever be ashamed for having the love and the joy and the presence of God in you. Amen. Now, listen, light is always most needed when it's the darkness. Darkest, I should say. I'm going to say just one more time. Light is always most needed when it's darkest. And God's timing is, by the way, always, always perfect. And it was his timing when he released Jesus onto the earth and said, now, go. In fact, Rachel put up um, Matthew 4.16, please, which was when God said, now, go. It's actually a quote from Isaiah as well in the Old Testament, speaking of what was going to happen. And we're going to go over and just take a look at what happened when Jesus showed up. The people who sat in darkness, and we already talked about what that was, they've seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is dawn. What is the shadow of death? It's the influence of what we spoke about. It's the influence of that dark stuff. That's the shadow of death. It influences. It's like the prince of the power of the air. It gets on. It comes on. Too much media. Too much negativity. Too much all this stuff. It tends to lead to darkness. But Jesus says, I've come and I'm the light of the world. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we know that light shines in the darkness. And darkness cannot overcome it. Everything comes in God's timing, and he's really good, and you can trust him. Can I get an amen? amen. There's a, there's a, it's called kairos, and you've probably heard it before. All it is is God's timing, and it actually means this, the appointed time in the purposes of God. And he had that kairos when he released Jesus, and we'll look at that in a moment. But he's also got another kairos right now, and that's this, the appointed time in the purposes of God. And as much as we're going to look at little baby Jesus and what was happening then, you need to know something too. You're here right now and you're alive right now because God ordained Kairos over you as well. It's not an accident that you're here and all the crazy things are happening. You're here in a time that God has ordained and said now. They're going to live now. He's not surprised by COVID. He's not surprised by the peoples. He's not surprised by this happening and that happening. But maybe a surprise, maybe, is that you're here and you've been ordained for this time. Amen? Amen. Lord, you're good. Let's go to the book of Luke, please. I can hear some Bibles flipping. That's a nice sound. Luke 2. Let's look at the birth of Jesus and this ordained Kairos time. Thank you, Lord. Are we there? And it came to pass... In those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while that guy Quirinius was governing Syria. How'd you like a name like that? Man, I struggle rem remembering names in the church. I can't even begin to think about if everyone had Greek names. Claudius is easy. That one's easy. Claudio. Okay. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child, or we could say this, she was exceedingly pregnant. 
Now, in those days, actually, if you were betrothed, they counted you to be the same as married. However, you were not allowed to know each other. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background, intimately, yeah. Here's a bit of the background. Um, they had a Roman government at the time, and they were under dictatorship, which means this. Absolute power without constitutional or moral limitations. And if you see any parallel at all into the time that we're going into, then you will see a Kairos timing. Amen? The relationship between the people like the farmers, the fishermen, the townspeople, scholars called it this, tense. And they said it was usually confrontational. Civil rights didn't exist for people. People were oppressed. And as for morality, they were bribed. There was coercion. There was uh, wickedness, a lot of it. The Romans were known for every kind of sexuality, and homosexuality was completely legalized at the time. And in fact, the soldiers had different homosexual rights than anyone else did. Light is most needed when it is darkest. Amen? And Caesar Augustus says this, all the world should be registered. And it wasn't so that he would know how many people were in the world. His desire was this, to tax everyone. Taxes then, if you think you're being taxed hard now, taxes then were 50 to 60% of your income. <laughs> and when you went for the census, when they figured out who you were and what you owed, if you couldn't pay, you then paid in animals or you paid in your land and they would take that as well. So things were not so good. Amen? Say dark times. I just find this very interesting that the God of hope in that moment said now. Now, release Jesus. Release my son. Release light now. Amen? So let's take a look here. Let's keep going. With my glasses so that we're going correctly. So while they were there, verse 6, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And by the way, she traveled, they traveled for almost 100 miles. Took four to five days to do this. And if you've ever been in Israel, you know that everything is rock and sharp. So they went through the valleys. They went over the rocky hills. They did all of this while she's exceedingly pregnant. There, there's something beautiful about God's timing. Even though it might be uncomfortable, even though it might seem like it's difficult, there's something beautiful about God's timing. Now look at this. Let's keep going. And she brought forth her firstborn, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, which actually means this, laid him in a feeding trough. And if you've ever been in Israel, where they, where they store the animals, yeah, the structure is made out of wood, but they have coming up out of stone feeding troughs. And that's what Jesus was in, in a feeding trough. Amen? Because there was no room at the inn for them. But, and they actually said this as well. Because coercion and corruption was so strong that if Joseph was a man of influence and had money, he could have went to the inn and he could have bribed them to get a room. But he didn't. There's something beautiful, so beautiful about the fact that he didn't have to go into the inn. They didn't have to coerce people. They weren't subject to people. He was born in a manger without the influence of people, without coercion of man or anything. Amen? Now, how many of you just like to get into the bush sometimes? Just get into the bush and walk. Just go. There's something beautiful about getting away from all of this. Thank you, Lord, for all of this. But there's something beautiful about getting away. Man, I've said it before. There's, there's, there's nothing like going, especially in the fall. If you have a quad or whatever it is, you go quadding. There'd be so many times when I would just stop because the trail ahead of me was no longer a trail. It was just this sea of yellow and red 
It's like someone laid down these blanket of leaves before you. There's no one on earth who can do that. I just get off the quad and I just walk in the leaves. It's beautiful. Jesus was born into something beautiful without the coercion of anyone else having to pay, having to be subject to men or anything like that. He was born and brought into a time like that. Amen? Now, God doesn't waste stuff. So when he's saying something in scripture, it's not random. It's not like, oh, look at that. It doesn't count. Say this. Say shepherds. Now, they were in the same country. Shepherds. Just so happens to be shepherds. And God will give you shepherds after your own heart. And shepherds look after sheep and animals and feed them. And shepherds are also called pastors. And it just so happens there is some in the same country. And if you're thinking, well, that just applies to pastors, no, sir. It doesn't just apply to pastors. In fact, Rachel, if you could put up... Um, Peter, please, 1 Peter 2, 9. It says this, you, say me, you're a chosen generation, you're a royal priesthood, you're a holy nation, you are his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He made each one of us ministers. And if you've been saved and asked Jesus into your heart, this makes you that too. First great big church was Moe's church. He had a lot of people. He had all of Israel, but he broke it up into different groups. And some of them were leaders over 10, some over 100, some over 1,000, some after that. But you have influence over someone. And as you grow in Jesus, your influence gets bigger. And if you listen to Jesus, he says this, man, go make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them. Cast out demons. Raise the sick. Raise the sick. Raise the dead. Heal the sick. They were living in the fields, and they were keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were messed up. Man, God does this light show, lets his glory come around these shepherds. Now, I want to, that's you, that's me. Just say it's me. I just find this so beautiful. God could have done this, you know, could have said there was, there was legalists, there was priests, there was Roman soldiers, but he says this, there was shepherds. And they're going to get a message. But to get the message, God ordains it. And then he qualifies it. And then he makes it supernatural. He gives these people this encounter. So his presence comes. His glory comes. This blinding light comes all over these shepherds. Just so happens that they were keeping watch. Then the angel says to them, now listen, here's, this is for each one of us. And it doesn't get any much more simple than this. Then the angel says to them, and he says to us right now, don't be afraid. What a word for this season. Don't be afraid. For behold, I'm bringing you good tidings, or let's call it this, I'm going to bring you some good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For there is born to you, though what happened 2,000 years ago still applies to this day, and the message is the same, this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Man, the fact that God releases his son and then tells shepherds this, it's like us saying, God's not mad at you. He's not counting your sins. He's not judging you. The truth is this, he's released forgiveness to all of the earth, the entire earth. He's forgiven the sins of every single person if they would come to him and receive him and accept him. This is the message. Shepherds, yes, they had the stick, the rod. They also had this, it says. uh, They usually had a a sling and a stone with them, just like David did. That if there was predators, they would deal with those as well. But he gives them this message. There's this encounter at the right time, God's timing. 
and he releases the angels from heaven. And these guys have this encounter, and it's not just the encounter. And by the way, I love the encounters. Every time there's an encounter, there's a message. Paul has an encounter on his horse. Light blows him off of his horse, gives him a message. I got a message for you, boy. I want you to go and talk to my church, and I'm giving you this message. You're going to go to the Gentiles, and you're going to speak. Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration, there's a message for you, Peter. Shut up and listen to my son. There's a message for us as well. But God doesn't just give you this message like he drops a heavy on you and says, go do this stuff. He exposes light and this beautiful encounter and gives you a simple message that it should give you enough joy that you speak to other people as well. I got a message for you today. God is not counting your sins. He has forgiven you and set you free. He's delivered you. If you would but accept his son and just turn away from your sin, that's all. He will give you an amazing life that you have not experienced yet. And if that's not enough, he promises you eternal life. Amen. So he does this. He does this. It's not just that a light shows up. The Bible says this, the glory of God shows up. On shepherds, they're not qualified. They don't know nothing. They're stupid. Unlearned, my wife says. And yet he does this. So if you think you don't qualify, I say this. God can trust you because you're not pride-filled. And he does the same with shepherds. I'm going to give you a simple message. It's going to overwhelm you. And I'm also going to give you an encounter. And my light's going to be all over you. You're going to be so messed up and filled with joy. The message is going to fill your heart so much that you cannot keep it secret. That's real Christianity. And if our Christianity's got to the point where, like, man, I don't even want to share, you need an encounter. And Christmas is not over. Amen. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. And this will be the sign to you that you're going to find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a feeding trough. So that was the message. And then God goes like this. Okay, that's not enough. I'm going to confirm it, like the Bible says, with two to three witnesses. I'm going to do this. I gave you a light display just to confirm it. That should be enough. I'm going to give you a bigger display. He goes like this. And suddenly there was with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Gives them a double dose. Man, those guys must do it. Anyone in the Bible who, who has encountered the Lord, they've been flat out. And so he does that double to them. I'm, I'm just like, I picture them just getting up for the first one. Like this, and then they see like this, uh oh, you know, the, now it's multitude. Down they go again, splattered on the ground. And that, yeah. See, this part, this is where I kind of, I go, I wonder what it was like. Because, listen, here's the message the message is don't be afraid. God's good. I have a message of great joy for you, for all people. Um, he says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, this hasn't changed, by the way. Peace, goodwill towards men. Why aren't we seeing that now? The message is the same. But the more people move away from God, the more darkness takes over. You already read what darkness is. Is this God's fault? Certainly not. The message is the same. And in fact, as it gets darker, the message is brighter. And as it gets darker, the messengers shine like crazy. How's he do it? He, however he wants. Double if he wants. So how should we be? Like our friend who's joyous in the spirit. Look what it cost. Just one person can do that. One person. This is not a Christmas like other ones. So this is, this is what he says. Okay. So it was when the angels had gone away from them that the shepherds said, no, I, I don't believe that. I believe what they said, but if I, that's me, I just got a double dose of the Holy Ghost, of the glory of God and light that has just flattened me, and then I'm going to get up and have a conversation with someone? Come on. 
yeah, I could just like uh, Bob and Joe, like the shepherds. And Joe wants to say something. Bob's like, no, no, just no. <laughs> no, no talking. No, just take a moment. Even a fool is thought to be wise when he says nothing. I could just picture those guys. After that light display, just let's, let's take a personal moment here. Let's just sit for a moment. That was wild. Man. I've, I've, yeah, amen. I've been in places where, um, in Mexico, and sometimes in the, in the most destitute places, and by the way, the shepherds were destitute, and that time was dark and not nice. I've been in places where they had a, an apple cart, and they had, um, you know the banana bikes we used to have when we were young? And they, they had the, like the handlebars. So the handlebars were attached to the apple cart with wheels, and they'd, they'd push in people with them, and we're having a healing service. That's wild. Wild. And you're right in the midst of it, and God's glory was there. I remember putting my hand on, they were saying, come, we were just young and Lord, come, pray, pray for people. Guy's backbone was sticking out of his shirt, and the glory of God was there. So we prayed for people, and you heard the snapping of bones, and his T-shirt just went flush with his back again. But because it was the glory of God, and because you're in it, you didn't think and go, Whoa, you, you, you just, you went on to the next, they brought someone, a, a woman or a little boy rolled in a rug, only his feet were sticking out. I don't know if he was dead or what. I wasn't asking questions because I wasn't in my right mind. I was in the presence of the Lord, which is very thick. What do you do in the presence of the Lord? What the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Just like so many times in the Bible. And God gave them a new heart, and they became a new man. Why? Because of the presence of the Lord. Praying for people, praying for people, crazy. My pastor, when our first mission trip, took Angie and a bunch of others to uh, Camp of Fleas, where they put flea collars on us so that... Uh, so the sand fleas wouldn't jump all over you. Uh, I remember the presence of God was so strong. We went to this church, which was a building. They had stumps and two-by-tens, and they'd sit on the two-by-tens. And we're standing behind. Everything's so surreal. I remember the little girl who was in front of me sitting there, probably one of the most beautiful kids I'd seen before, and her hair was white with lice, and you could see them all moving around. And yet in the presence of the Lord, I don't think I've ever seen a girl so beautiful. Just beautiful, holy, wonderful. And then the preacher who's there, I can't understand what they're saying. Just going on and going on in, in Spanito. And every now and then he'd release a, a, a word to us because there we are sitting over there, both terrified and in the presence of the Lord. And he's going on preaching to his people. And he says, get ready, man. You're preaching next. I'm like, ha, ha, And he goes, no, serious. And then he keeps going on in Spanish. I'm like, oh, and then fear grips you. And I think I knew three scriptures in the Bible then. So I'd go and I'd flip to those three scriptures and look, oh, I'll talk about this. And I've said that before. Everything that I flipped to, I couldn't remember a word. And it's like the Lord was saying, you are not going to rely on yourself. You're not going to rely on what you think that you know. So finally the guy calls me up there and gives me the microphone and then he's interpreting for me. And I, I swear that I was left there, yet I was over here watching myself speaking, going like, are you nuts? Look at you. You're crazy. Look, what are you even speaking? It was the wildest, wildest thing. And afterwards, when we were done speaking, I was like, let's make our exit like this. Because people don't always respond the way you want them to. And so the pastor goes like this, looks at me and goes, I'm going to call an altar call. And we're going to have people come up and get prayed for. And I'm, I'm thinking, are you looking at their faces? I mean, you, should, you should make an exit for us is what you should do so we can get out of here. So he calls them. No joke. They knocked over chairs to come to the front. It was very dark there. It was very oppressive. They were going through a lot. Light is always most needed when it's dark. All they saw was light. They came up for prayer, and that's when the snapping of bones, and they brought people in rugs. It was the most tremendous healing service I've ever been at. 
off the charts, and I had no idea what we were supposed to do. And I even looked at one of my other guys, what are we supposed to do? And he goes, I don't know, let's go pray for people. So I thought, I'll stick with him. If, you know, they'll, if they try and attack us, man, people got healed. They'd sit down and just shake and cry in front of us. Like they were having some sort of an encounter that we got to watch and be a part of. See, that's what God does. That's what he did with Jesus. That's what he did with the shepherds. I'm not just going to send you out. I'm going to send you out equipped. Well, Lord, you should have got people who already knew everything. That's the problem. They already know everything. I don't want to use them. They won't give me glory and they won't surrender to me. So Jesus chooses shepherds. Guys who are not very well thought of at all. Guys who will listen to him. Whoa. Gives them a double dose of the glory of God. Sheesh. Then look what they do. So finally, after a Selah moment, I'm sure, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, what the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe laying in the manger. And look what they did. Now, when they had seen him or had their encounter, they made widely known the saying which was told them and concerning this child. And everyone who had heard it marveled. Didn't say that they accepted Jesus. Didn't say that they became Christians or went to a church, but they marveled. Your job is not to know if that person has accepted Jesus and what's happening in their life. Your job is to tell the story of what you've seen and encountered, shepherd. What happens with them, that's totally not your business. Some sow, some water, God brings the increase. God does it. All he's asking you, and this is so simple, hey, I'm going to give you the message. I'm going to give you an encounter. I'm going to give you some glory. And then all I want you to do is go out and share what you've seen. And by the way, i got a super simple message for you of good tidings of peace. It's really easy to do. I'll be with you when you do it. And when you speak that, leave them to me. Because once they hear it, they can't unhear it. Amen? I tell you what, our government are not full of wicked, evil people. They're full of people that are lost and people who need to hear a very, very simple message or even be reminded. He has put the knowledge of him in every man. I don't care what man is trying to dec decree that he is God and he will make this country in his image. God has put in that man, too, the knowledge of God. And when very, very simple people come and remind him, it does something. Amen? Amen. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. That's not a difficult task at all. Jesus did the rest and still does. Amen? Now, there's a really simple message that's been given to you. And I'm wondering this actually for myself and for you as well. It very could be, it could be, it very well may be that you need a new encounter. I think we've all heard the message so many times of simplicity. And it may just very well be that what you need is an encounter. And I thank the Lord for a beautiful example of someone who had the courage to come up. And when you come up and God feels it just takes a little bit of a stepping out. Well, Morgan got an encounter and everyone got to benefit from that. Rachel, those last three scriptures, can you put them up, please? When it comes to the double dose of God, when it comes to being thrown down, uh, picked back up, being filled with such joy that you have your Selah moment and then you go, oh, this is so awesome. Let's go, let's go, let's go see if this is true. Let's just go do this. Ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be opened to you. If you want the glory of God. And by the way, this Christmas is not like any other Christmas. 
this is a supernatural time where there has been this shadow of, let's just call it darkness that has come, and it's actually working out for the church's advantage quite well. Because God is making us, that's why he says, nobody takes a light or a candle and hides it, puts it under a cover. Guys, shine. You don't need a soapbox, but you do need to allow the Lord to move through you and on you. And who knows what he'll do. Amen? And look at this, verse uh, 13 as well. And whatsoever you would ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified. You can ask for whatever you want. You can ask for healing. You can ask for the finances. That's all cool and awesome. But I'm asking for this. Lord, would you give me yet once again a wonderful encounter in your presence? Lord, would you treat me like you treated those shepherds? Because I believe that this is a Kairos time. And Lord, I know that you've got light in this hour. But here I am, alive. Why am I here right now, Lord, in this hour? But you've got me to shine. Lord, I need an outpouring again. And I know that you're willing. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy might be full. Boy, it don't get no simpler than that. Okay. If you're afraid that you're going to receive a religious God, that's a lie. If you're afraid that you're going to lose everything, you're going to lose your spouse and your family, that too is a lie. If you're afraid that people are going to reject you, they rejected Jesus. It's not you that they reject. And Jesus says that to his people. It's not you that they're rejecting. It's me. But he does say this, that if you come to me, you'll gain everything. In fact, 30 or 60 or even 100 fold more just by surrendering to me in this hour. I'm going to re just read this message once again to us. This is why Jesus came. Don't be afraid. Oh, man, that's good. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. I'm paraphrasing. It's for you, but it's also for all people. For there has been born this day and from now on from the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on this earth, peace and goodwill towards men. Lord, this is a really simple message. And God, it's a good message. And it hasn't changed, and it's beautiful, and it's full of life. God, I'm going to pray for those that are online or for those that are here. Lord, it doesn't matter. Jesus, for, for those of us that need that encounter. And Lord, you give freely. You give freely to all that ask. So Lord, I just want to start with this, Jesus. Maybe there's people who don't know you. Maybe they don't know that you're good. Maybe they've never heard the message, but they've heard religion and they've heard bondage and they've heard thou shalt not. Lord, that's not why you came. And Father, that's part of darkness, and you brought light. And I just decree right now that darkness always runs from the light because it can't comprehend it. So where there's dark thoughts, thank you for illuminating people's thoughts today that they might receive you, Jesus. So Lord, I offer you today. I'm just going to make you the offer, Lord. And all I'm doing is partnering with what you did 2,000 years ago, but was planned 6,000 years ago. If you've never accepted the free gift of Jesus, who has wiped away all of your sin, and no one else has done it, no man, no beast, nothing. There's only one way to the Father being reconciled back to him. And it's through Jesus who paid the ultimate price. There's no other way. Can't do it by your smarts. Can't do it by the things that you possess or how other men might think of you. Nothing matters. But one thing, Jesus. And he's put that knowledge, that desire in you. 
So you don't say it because I'm saying it. This is between you and Jesus. It's how it starts between you and Jesus. He forms you. He makes you. How it ends is between you and Jesus. We all stand before him. In judgment, some will. Those that reject him, it's true. But for those who accept him, they go past that. That judgment shall not harm them. Let's say this together. Say, Jesus, I hear your message today. I choose today to ask you into my heart. I believe you're the son of God. You died for me. You took my sin and you called me to the Father. I turn away from old things and old beliefs. Jesus, take away all of my sin, everything I've done. Take it away. Jesus, I've heard the Christmas story. Those shepherds had an encounter with you, your glory, and angels. They changed the world. They told everyone. Jesus, I ask you today for that encounter, a unique one for me. One that you have for me. The word says, ask, and my joy would be complete. I ask you today for that encounter. And I mean it. <laughs> It's one thing to, to say that in the house of God, and it's another thing when you get outside and the encounter starts coming, and you put on your Reebok, and you're like, man, I'm out of here. <laughs> Forget that. It's getting too real. Say, Lord, thank you for courage in your presence. Thank you, Lord. Can we give the Lord a praise clap? Because he's so good. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you're so good. is open. If you'd like to buy someone a free coffee, that's cool. Do that. But if you have any need this morning, like uh, healing or anything, any any kind of a need, anything, or maybe it's this, man, I, I prayed for that encounter, but I'm just wanting a bit more. Then we're going to open up the altars and you can come up and receive prayer this morning. Otherwise, enjoy each other. We'll see you Christmas Eve. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a praise clap?